no matter, I think. Oh, the recording worked. Nice. So, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome. Today is January 9th, 2011. I am Silverfish and you're watching uh, Overgrowth Weekly number 4. So before I start with the, the real show, so to speak, I want to uh, announce some changes to the show. I have posted about it several times before, but anyways, I just want to tell you about it. And that is that I am now covering more than just the game itself. I'm going to cover uh, news surrounding Overgrowth and what the community is doing, etc, etc. And you can see this on the agenda. And I also have some news there at the end. Um, but I'm not going to cover all the stuff that is in a special pre-order forum. Like for example, these two community watch thingies uh, were on the special pre-order forum. Uh, but they are also on YouTube, so anyone can watch them. It's just that they're hard to find if you haven't pre-ordered. But I won't do that too much. So still, pre-order the game if you want to have all the good stuff. So let's start with it then. Uh, first up is the weekly alpha and the changes in there. So I think, yeah, right there. I'm just going to go through all the changes uh, that, has, that have been done and maybe explain something if there is something that isn't like totally clear what's going on. So, activated all weapons, that's pretty self-explanatory. He recently made physics to the weapons and made it so you could pick them up and uh, that is now activated for all weapons. And even the hammers, I tried out some like blacksmithing hammer, it's like, well, very very small. And it would be sweet if they, in the game, you can use like tools and uh, like screwdrivers or just hammers or whatever, like small, I mean, um, nail hammering hammers here. That would be pretty sweet. It would add a, a very, I don't know, manhunt style to the game. And uh, next up, items have shadows and physics interpolation. Shadows, yeah, it's, it's shadows. And physics imp interpolation, that means that when you're playing uh, them in slow motion, uh, instead of being laggy like they were before, it looked like they were low FPS or something. Now they will interpolate between the um, different states so it will look smooth in the, in the, when it's in physics. Added the blender weapon animation and, and attachment posing. I'm guessing that it's something, something to do with um, adding where the weapons end up when you pick them up and uh, perhaps adding where the weapons are held in the hands. And weapon collision events with the sounds pitched based on mass. He goes through that in the video up here, and uh, so you can see it for yourself. It's basically um, uh, sounds for the weapons when they hit the ground. Oh, I'm just gonna write something here. Sorry, sorry. And next up we have uh, the... Uh, okay. Custom convex holes and centers of mass for weapons. That's actually pretty cool because... Um, as it goes through in the video, that means that the uh, weapons will behave much more realistically uh, thanks to the uh, uh, centers of mass that you can add yourself. And custom convex holes is also very good because that means that instead of using the very advanced geometry that um, the weapon is made of, he will uh, it will instead use a much simpler, it's maybe just a square or yeah, something very simple for the game to work with when you, you're doing uh, physics calculations. Expanding convex holes based on speed to avoid penetration. That means that he is, um, when the weapons fall, or, or they can't go through the terrain now because um, it, it, it extends the uh, collision object for the object. So it's actually longer than it appears. It's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to explain how it works. But uh, it means that weapons will probably not go through the terrain. It, it, when they fall too quickly. And weapons can override character animations. He shows this in the video very nicely as well. If the if you hold a two-handed weapon, he will hold it with both hands, etc, etc. Uh, fixed plans shader bug. I don't know what that is, but it's good because it's fixing a bug. And no collision flag for collidable plant trunk and trunks and non-collidable leaves. Uh, this is... Um, I'm guessing you can... Because I'm going to show this later, but Marcus made um, trees and uh, stuff, and yeah, he made trees and stuff. He made a bunch, a whole bunch of custom objects for the game, and um, he couldn't. 
Um, oh, I just lost my train of thought there. Um, excuse me. Um, he, um, yeah, the um, tree bodies. What are they called? Plant shader bug. It should say plant trunks. Yeah, trunks. The trunks and stuff like that. They shouldn't be. You shouldn't be able to go through them. So he made it through that so that you can activate. So you actually they are solid. But because before, if you had the plant shader on something, um, you could walk through it. And phew. sorry, there. I just got lost my train of thought completely. And uh, custom collision models for objects. That means that um, you can have, like with the weapons, here you can have a custom collision object that is not as advanced as the meshes. So it'll be more consistent when you're moving around on the objects. No small bumps will be there. You can actually have, for example, if you have a small rock that you don't want to be have collision at all, you can look, turn off the collision uh, altogether by adding an empty uh, custom collision model. And uh, I hope that clears some things up if you didn't understand some of that stuff. So let's move on to the next item on our agenda, and that is auto updater and open source. And uh, Jeff uh, talked in IRC a little while back about uh, per that he wanted to add an auto updater uh, that would uh, auto update overgrowth. And then uh, sometime later he uh, tweeted that he was thinking of making a general open source auto updater. And he asked if anyone, el anyone else wanted to wanted, uh, wanted a um, general open source auto updater as well. So this means that uh, anyone who wants to keep their Mac, Linux and Windows games up to date would be able to do so uh, using this open source auto updater. And in my opinion, that was of, would of course be super sweet. It would kind of be like, uh, I mean, that's one of the big things with, for example, Jasura and uh, Steam, right? That uh, you get your uh, games automatically updated. And uh, I think it's a, kind of a big thing. It's not a, super easy to make an auto-updater for your game. And to have a um, an auto-updater that several games can use, it's multi-platform, that would be just be super sweet because it would take away one of the big things uh, about about these distribution services. So if you're selling a game and you don't want to put it on a distribution service, you would still be able to get your games automatically updated using this auto updater, and it would hopefully be be pretty easy to implement. So I hope they go through with this. I mean, it's just he's thinking about it, and uh, you can think about it whatever you want. So yeah. Good news if it happens. If it doesn't happen, oh well, I guess it will be like it has always been. And next on the list we have uh, Aubrey's art overview. He made uh, this week his first art overview uh, for Overgrowth. And uh, that is basically he goes through um, different art assets and uh, so on and so forth. And the thought behind, not between the art, art assets, I don't think he has any thoughts between the art assets. Maybe he does, I don't know. Um, but he goes through um, the art assets and his thoughts behind them and what um, yeah, what they're for and um, what it does to bring the scene together, etc, etc. For gameplay and for looks. So I can uh, really recommend that you watch this video. It's on the Wolfire blog at blog.wolfire.com. So check that out if you're interested. It's really good. He's he says he's probably going to make one every Thursday. He's going to try at least. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and uh, yeah let's hope he keeps that um, promise I guess and then we have the next segment that is the community watch and uh, in the community watch segment I will showcase some of the uh, stuff that the community has been doing uh, lately uh, so first we'll, we're going to take a look at Marcus custom assets but uh, there is also another video I want to show later so I'm just going to open that up so that can preload um, because I'm using YouTube I don't want I didn't want to bother these people with sending me their video files I should probably should do that in the future because YouTube is kind of unreliable sometimes as you can see my connection should be able to reliably stream 1080p but for some reason that doesn't always work so there we go so let's take a look at Marcus he's actually in the chat right now Marcus with 2s let's take a look at the assets he has made and uh, then I'll probably comment on um, some on them later
So first off we have bamboo. It's very nice. As you can see he can walk through the bamboo and that was the thing with the um, yeah, with the plant shader, that if you had a plant shader on something, uh, you couldn't walk through it. But now you can change it so that you can't walk through it if you want to. And here we have cherry blossoms, very nice, of course. I think Anton mentioned that he thought they should be a bit more pink, and I think I agree on that. But hey, it's cherry blossoms, they're uh, plants, I guess they can look is in s several different ways. Yeah, here he actually um, writes some stuff about the, what has been implemented in the latest alpha. Yeah, Anton just mentioned in the chat that it, the color of the cherry blossoms uh, depend on uh, the time of season. I don't actually know a lot about cherry blossoms, so. And of course bonsai trees are very nice, especially these bonsai trees. All look very, very nice. And these, yeah, these uh, three videos actually um, are. They are actually posted with uh, quite a bit of time in between them, so um, it's kind of a lot of info uh, at once. It was I don't know how long it was between the videos, but anyways, let's just move on to the next one. Oh, let's see, Marcus wrote something. Uh, yeah, so yeah, apparently Marcus has improved the um, the blossom placement right now, so they should look even better than they do in that video, and uh, it's already amazing. So here we have uh, the next video, where there are just a bunch of um, awesome custom objects once again. I think all of these objects, like every single one is custom. And there we have a game. Play some go in overgrowth, check this script go when the game is done, I suppose. Would be pretty sweet, sit down by a table and play some go or chess or whatever. And a few weapons, I hope he makes those a little bit later so we can kick some ass with them. And perhaps make it so you can hit the gong with them, to make a sweet gong sound. He said he mentions that there is no local lighting system yet, and I hope they add that in later. But they actually don't need to, um, considering how, what kind of game this is. But I, but I hope they do because it will be very, very useful for the in the future. And there he says that again: uh, objects with transparency, also known as using the plant shader, uh, can can be walked through, but not in the latest alpha because you can add a custom custom object for collision, as I said like 15 times. Marcus uh, adds also in the chat right now that he actually bought the Bada from the Turbo Squid, but everything else is made by him. So credit where credit is due, I suppose. Yeah, Buglish, this is all custom-made objects. Uh, Buglish mentioned, asked in the chat if this is a dojo for the cat, dog, or rabbit race, and uh, I don't think there is a specific race for these assets. They're just custom-made by um, Marcus, as I've said, and um, they can be used by whoever wants to use them in the future. He has actually haven't um, s given them out for download yet, uh, but uh, he will in the future. And I actually got uh, those assets from him, and uh, I'm going to try to use them uh, after this stream, so stay tuned for that. Now here is the last video. Actually, isn't this one of the... I should have looked through this probably. Let's just look at this as well, in any case. I think this is one of the first video, and uh, the uh, one we look at before this one is a later one that shows basically the same thing but this is nice as well.
Yeah, as he mentions. Yeah, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty empty everywhere. I'm guessing this is before he got um, all those objects in there. But it's still very sweet. Though. And it looks a bit different from the other, other video, so like, let's take a look through all of this. And there's a nice bridge as well. It sounds like he's walking on a rock when he's walking on the bridge, but now it's possible to make it sound like he's walking on wood, actually. This is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's like Minecraft. So if you like Minecraft, you'll like Overgrowth. Ding, like... Add, smile, I don't know. And just like all the ob other objects, like the standard objects in Overgrowth, these are modular, so... So that's pretty sweet. And this is awesome. There you can see every little object that is used to make this place. I don't think that's very good to do for gameplay, though. And that's that whole video. Let's close that tab down and take a look at uh, Key to Vans to custom levels. These are also very sweet. So let's start that up. I hope the music isn't too loud. Let me know in the chat if the music is good or if it's too loud or too low or whatever. So what he has done here, this is the Goodbye Titans level, I think. Yeah, it's the Goodbye Titans level. And this is a level where there are a bunch, I think it's four or something like that, titans, and they are basically huge persons, huge people that have frozen in place. Sort of like uh, a mix between art and gameplay, I suppose. And uh, this is the Cat Leap City level. And uh, this is uh, a quite in geometry, um, or the assets that it uses, just pretty simple assets. Oh no, it's back into the other level, I suppose. Okay, this is becoming a pretty bad commentary. Whatever, I hope you can see through it. On the big screen there, there is the Goodbye Titans level again. As you can see, there is a huge hand right there. That is on right now. It's, it might be hard to see because everything is so damn big. But if you go look uh, from a distance, it looks awesome. And you can fight on it as well. Oh no! That's what happens, folks. You don't want to meet a fucking wolf in the forest. He will kick your ass. And we're back to Goodbye Titans again. And we're back to uh, Cat Leap City. I think this Cat Leap City. Actually, I'm not sure. There might be a prison in Goodbye Titans as well. Or just in Goodbye Titans. I don't know. There's Goodbye Titans. There you can see a bit of the Titans from a distance there. And there you go. That's 
Key to Vance, a Goodbye Titans, and um, Cat Deep City levels. And they, to me, they look like multiplayer levels primarily, but I'm sure they can be made into awesome single player levels as well. There currently is no multiplayer in Overgrowth though, but it will be added, and they have said there will be at least um, co op play. So I hope that will um, be good enough, e even if they can't uh, implement the uh, versus play. I'm not sure how good versus would work, actually, but yeah, I guess I hope they try it out. And if it doesn't work, man, it doesn't work. Much more, not much more to say about it. And next we have the tweets and news segments, and this is where I go through the. Um, Tweets that they have been doing. If you not, if you don't have a Twitter or you're not following tweets, um, this is a good uh, place if you want to get up to speed on what's going on because some pretty sweet stuff is being posted there. So first here we have David testing out night skies, and um, he actually took a um, panorama from European so Southern Observatory, and here's a picture of how it looks. And I'd say that looks pretty damn awesome, even though it's, that's not how my night sky looks when I look out of the window right now. Of course, it's cloudy, but anyways, I guess <clears throat> he's thinking about, um, since these are animals in this game, they probably have a bit better vision than us humans do, so perhaps this is how it looks for an animal. I don't know, or it's, he just wants, wants it because it's super sweet. And this might be a placeholder, might not be a placeholder. I'm thinking it's probably a placeholder, but um, yeah, we'll see in the future if it if it's in or if it's out. And next we have uh, sliding sounds. This is a tweet that um, David made as well, and he added sliding sounds for all materials played underneath landing sounds based on tangent velocity to the surface. And it's these small things that make <laughs> that make a wolf fire, I guess, such an awesome company because the sound system right now, the Foley stuff they have uh, talked about before and that they have already added in the game, they make the game they give the game such a such an awesome feeling when you're just running around. It's so amazing, and uh, having even more sounds play layer on top of that, depending on the tangent velocity to the surface, it'll be just awesome in the end, when they have added all of the effects, it'll be amazing and the um, right now in the game, when you're running around the feeling in the game is all already very, very good, actually, even though it's early, early alpha so, yeah, it's just going to be amazing when it's done I don't know what more to say. And IRC tweets. Actually, this was done in IRC not long ago. But uh, just linked this Twitter feed to uh, w uh, with the Wolfire channel on irc.wolfire.com, so IRC users can see these messages. And it seems like he had a bit of trouble with that, uh, but I think he has it working now. So basically, what this means, um, well, Wolfire first off have a IRC channel, and here is that. So. Oops, I accidentally hit my table. So that means that when uh, he tweets something uh, from the Wolfi channel, uh, it should appear in uh, this uh, IRC chat. And I think he did that a while ago. So we can take a look at that. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, this is it. New news from twitter.com slash humble. Getting a lot of suggestions. Yeah, as you can see, this is just one tweet there, and then it's a delimiter or whatever it's called and then it's another tweet and uh, yeah so it's a summarization it summarizes the tweets from the previous 24 hours or something I don't know how it works really but um, yeah it's pretty awesome I mean if you don't have Twitter I because I was kind of thinking about this I don't really want to use Twitter uh, honestly I don't have any use for it but um, Sorry, uh, but uh, it's a nice way, as David said in a previous blog post, to just get a, a small piece of news out there without having to write you know, a blog post about it. You can just write your 140 characters or whatever and then you're done. Um, so yeah, having uh, the um, tweets linked to the IRC is pretty damn awesome. I really like that. And next, we have a couple of new night shader tests that David did. So I'm guessing these are night shaders. A, a shader is... Well, it's kind of hard to describe what a shader is, so I'm not going to uh, try even, because 
Well, you know how good I am at describing stuff. So here, which one is the first one? This one is the first one. Here we have one of the pictures. As you can see, it changes how a lot of stuff looks. He it's right. He writes in the tweet. Let's take a look at the tweet again. Um, testing an idea that desaturates, adds noise, uh, and blurs detail while retaining sharp edges. I don't really like how this looks. Actually, well, it's kind of it looks kind of good, um, but uh, personally, I really like uh, when it's to get that feeling you get when it's you know dark outside and there is just you and your breath or whatever you know what I mean. Uh, it feels I. It gives a good feeling of you being there at night times in a game if you if you do it right, and I think that this making it look I don't know if that's what making it look um, what's making it look bright, but that might be it. So yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't really like this. I would prefer if it was just normal or if he changed the um, quote normal unquote uh, night to um, feel brighter but still feel more night like. And then we have an improved version of that uh, right here. Well, I don't know if it's improved, it's just another version, uh, I guess. And um, yeah, as you can see, it's not as blue. I don't know if that's just the map. And it's not as uh, powerful, the effect. So yeah, that's uh, the Night Shaders. As I said, I am not a huge fan of this. And uh, if he ter if it's in there, I hope you can turn it off or whatever. But uh, hey, it's it's a good thing to just try stuff out. And then we have uh, the last tweet. Well, it's it's actually not a tweet. It's uh, a forum post where Jeff discusses that they have a uh, possible solution to the. Uh, spam problem because the, uh, earlier there have been a lot of bots or whatever coming through the Wolf Eye forums despite the, them having uh, recaptcha, that's always nice to pronounce, recaptcha, yes. Um, so and that's basically like, uh, you know, skewed letters and then you have to write it in and robots or bots, spam bots, hopefully can't do that but it seems like they can and uh, there have been a huge problem with spam bots being able to get past uh, this um, recapture and uh, post spam on the forums and I haven't seen much of it actually because um, um, well I don't know I haven't seen much of it because the I guess the moderators are so good they're removing it all the time but I have seen some remnants of it where uh, in the random parts of the forums where posts have been left there for amusement I suppose and um, yeah so uh, the thing is, I should probably describe what this is about. So, the new plan is to make it so that people who are not in the pre-order group will need to have the their first post authorized by a moderator. That was the first idea, but then they came to the conclusion that they could have everyone who had pre-ordered the game able to uh, uh, say yes or no to one of those new posts. So if you have pre-ordered the game, you can go to uh, this place here. And you should see like a small triangle with a question mark and I have actually done this a few times uh, next to one of these and then you just click that and you will get to a page where you see the post and you can approve or disapprove it if you're in the uh, secret pre-order forum group. So that's uh, that's actually very good. Uh, I don't know how it's been going. I, I guess it's been going pretty well since nothing more have been said about it and uh, I myself have disapproved like five spam posts or something so yeah I guess it's it works pretty good actually uh, um, it takes of course work I don't know why this recapture thing doesn't work I have never heard of the recapture not working I, I thought that was like the impenetrable defense against the bots but perhaps these aren't bots they might be real people just roaming the internet and posting random links and in that case, I guess, I guess uh, not much we can do about it. And that's actually everything on the agenda today. So if you have any questions, post them in the chat right now. If not, um, 
I guess we'll go go to the post show stuff, which will not be recorded actually. So I will right now just give you a few links that you should actually go to. You should actually go to them. Let's see. Where do I have that? Right there. Oh yeah, Overgrowth Weekly. So there go those two links, youtube.com slash sftovergrowth. That's the YouTube channel where I post uh, tutorials and stuff like that uh, about overgrowth. I have three videos there right now. I think one is obsolete because it was from Alpha, Alpha 60 or something like that. And we're, we're at 112 right now. So youtube.com slash sftovergrowth for overgrowth tutorials. More will be coming there shortly. And then we have steamcommunity.com slash groups slash sftot. And um, uh, that's a Steam group. So if you're using Steam, you can uh, join the group. And if you have Steam up and uh, running, you will get notified when I schedule one of these live streams, for example. Or if uh, I upload a tutorial or anything other like that that has anything to do with SF tutorials. That's basically my tutorial thing or whatever. So... If you're into that kind of stuff, like these streams and my tutorials, you should totally go to that website right there, steamcommunity.com slash groups slash sftut. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and um, I hope you have a magnificent continuation on your day or evening. Um...